Hey everyone, this is uh, my name is Paul. I want to go over a little bit today about ACDF surgery. And if you've ended up here, you probably are hunting information on uh, ACDF surgery. So, just a little background on me. Uh, I'm a 41 year old guy, and I had a ACDF, which is anterior cervical discectomy infusion, on the C5, C6 level. Uh, my surgery was on Tuesday, November the 13th, and today is Saturday, November the 17th. So a little history behind mine. Uh, I herniated uh, discs back in October of 2011. In uh, December of 2011, I had a cervical epidural injection and then had another one in January of 2012. So two months, about 30 days apart. That coupled with physical therapy helped me quite a bit. Uh, I was having arm pain in uh, my right, my right uh, arm and uh, shoulder area, uh, down the back of my arm into my bicep and tricep area. After those injections and the physical therapy things were going well, um, about three years later, 2014, I started having some more issues, but it included uh, occipital headaches. So basically, excuse me, anytime I was having... <clears throat> um, irritation in my neck, inflammation from all this, it was causing tension in the muscles that run up the back of the head into the occipital muscles here behind your ear. And those muscles were crushing cranial nerves, which was causing radiating pain around the side of my face and into my uh, eye socket and things like that. And some numbness in my face and they were turning into migraines. So to combat that, I ended up doing a lot of dry needling for the last three years, uh, pretty regularly, every four to five months, as tension would increase across my shoulders, I'd go in for dry needling, and uh, that would take care of it for a while. Pain level always stayed between a two and three. Uh, but this January, uh, January 2018, after I'd uh, run three miles, uh, I had been on a routine of running three miles three days a week, uh, I noticed after I cooled down, I had some pain, and by the next morning, uh, the pain was pretty bad. So I went in and had an MRI done and was told immediately, you need to see a neurosurgeon again. Um, basically, I'd already been seeing a, a neurosurgeon and an orthopedic surgeon just to keep up with everything that was going on. But I went and saw a new neurosurgeon uh, with th this go around. He immediately scheduled uh, surgery for March the 14th of this year. Uh, and he wanted to do a double fusion because uh, the C4-5 is bulging out a little bit. Um, and C5-6, what had happened was at C5-6, the reason for so much pain is two pieces have broken off of the disc itself and we're now pinching the cord in addition to pushing on the nerves uh, at that level. So it became more of a, an issue. Now, that neurosurgeon called me the day before surgery, the morning before on March the 13th and canceled the surgery because my pain level was so low. I was okay with that because he, he wanted to give it an opportunity to absorb, see if my body would absorb those two pieces of material that had broken off uh, and they wanted to be pretty minimalistic uh, as far as their approach and, and I do understand that. Um, so I went uh, basically until October the 18th um, going that route, uh, just monitoring it, but I had gotten to the point where I was kind of tired of worrying if you know I was going to be injured further because these were to, you know impacting my spine at this point and I had noticed I had gotten uh, my hands were starting to feel a little bit fumbly and my legs were getting a little weak and some of my muscle uh, in my arms I just I felt weaker so I saw a different neurosurgeon because he, he has since uh, left the local area uh, I saw a new neurosurgeon and his it's Dr. Uh, new Nujan Kazimi at UAMS, which is, uh, that's the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences here in Central Arkansas. It's a teaching hospital, and he is, he is I believe, an assistant professor over there. I uh, saw him on October the 17th, and there was no question about it. He said, you have to have surgery. Uh, we're not going to be able to delay this any longer. My hope was, in part of the delay, was to get an artificial disc out of this, the Moby C disc, uh, but he said, unfortunately, I was not a good candidate for it because one of those pieces that had broken off of the disc itself had slid behind and down uh, behind vertebrae number six. So what he was going to have to do was shave off more of vertebrae number six to get to the piece that he needed to pull out. And because of that, it would have been an unstable platform to set an artificial disc on it. And he just wasn't comfortable with that. 
I get it. Um, but the time had come to do the surgery. So, um, everything moved fast. That same day I did all my, pre- my pre-op, uh, CT scan, blood work, all that stuff that same day. So, and he scheduled the surgery for, uh, Thursday, November the 15th, but moved me up to November the 13th, about six days prior to surgery. So I had to jump through some hoops there at the end, but, um, I'm now 96 hours post-op right now. Um, so let's talk about the surgery a, li- a little bit uh, from the beginning. So I had to be at the, the hospital. Mine was done at a hospital setting instead of an outpatient. Uh, the surgeon that was going to do it in March, it would have been an outpatient setting. But retros- looking back now, I'm really, really glad I had it at a hospital. Uh, their policy at this hospital is you stay one night for observation after the surgery. Really, really glad for that. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the, let's talk a little bit about the pre-op. So pre-op was pretty insignificant. I had to arrive at 6 a.m. with a scheduled surgery of 8.15. Um, the only thing that pre-op consisted of was I did a little bit of blood work. They started an IV line uh, in my wrist. And by 8, 8.15, they were wheeling me back to surgery. So on the way back, uh, the anesthesiologist came in and talked to me, of course, prior. Uh, one thing that was important to note on this was uh, he, he discussed memory recall or recall during surgery with me. Now with this surgery, the surgeons are working around your face and your head. In a normal surgery setting, he said they usually will use a a mask over your face and you breathe in the anesthesia. It's a more control, they're all controlled processes, but it's a little bit more controlled and the rate of memory recall during a surgery where you actually hear things and stuff during the surgery is less than 1%. But because they have to work up around your head and face, they cannot use the gas mask. They have to use all intravenous uh, style uh, drugs for this. So it raises the memory recall to 3%. Uh, he had been doing this for 40 years. He said, that you shouldn't really remember anything. And sure enough, I, I never recalled anything. So anyway, so they got the line started, got me wheeled into surgery about 8.15, 8.30. And I, I assume uh, they did some other things prior. You know, once they got me in there, he did use the mask to get me to sleep, and then once I was asleep, he started everything else in the IV. Now, while I was in there, I went in with one IV. In post-op, I, I woke up with uh, two IVs and an arterial pick. So I assume they put one in the back of this hand here. Uh, for whatever reason, they must have been doing some different medicine in it at the same time. I'm fine with that. Uh, the arterial pick. Uh, you can see a lot of bruising here it was put in right here uh, at the base of the wrist. The reason for that arterial pick, at least it was explained to me, is uh, they they monitor the uh, blood gases and things through that pick line that they put in there, so that when the surgeons got everything retracted here, um, they they can tell if they're retracting too close to the jugular and the carotid arteries. That if if they start to pinch it for any reason they'll be able to detect changes in blood gases and things like that through that pick. So it's a safety measure. So I'm I'm perfectly happy and and glad that they did that. Um, One other thing that they did after they got me out, I believe, um, they stuck needles all over my body. So I had needles in both wrists. Uh, I had a needle on the back of this wrist. Still a little spot there. I had needles behind both knees. I had needles in both calves. I had needles in both ankles. And I had needles on the bottom of my feet. And I had uh, needles up in the top of my chest here where, so what they were doing and how it was explained to me was during the surgery, since they're working with the spinal cord, they want to make sure they're, all, they're always checking the spinal cord's function so that they, you know, can keep up with whether they're hurting it or not. And during the surgery, they at times send electrical impulses through each of those needles and they're looking for muscle contraction and things like that. They're trying to make sure that the muscles are working as they're supposed to all throughout the surgery. So, you know, they're, they, it's just another safety measure to make sure that they're taking care of you the, the proper way. So I had no problem with that. There was no pain associated with it. It was all done after I was already out. Um, and it would, they all were taken out afterwards um, before I was even in the, to the post-op. So it was a classic uh, ACDS surgery at 5'6", uh, single level fusion. He did not need to fuse the level above it. He wasn't worried about that level at all perfectly comfortable with that. It was about an hour to an hour and 10 minute surgery uh, total. Uh, He had a great team in there working with him. Uh, He had a resident surgeon uh, that was also in there working as well as some other uh, residents there that were 
uh, in school basically. So had no issues with that. So after that, they wheeled me into the uh, post-op area. Uh, post-op, first thing I noticed when I woke up was, of course, the sore throat. What I also noticed and was important was the fact that I did not have any um, pain down my, well, I said the side, down my right arm or uh, right bicep area. It was all gone. I did have some pain across the back of my shoulders, and I'm sure that was just that surgery related. So in post-op, um, you feel kind of like you have a cotton, um, cotton mouth, cotton throat. So, and part of the reason for that is they do have to intubate you for the surgery. Um, for the same reasons they can't do the IV bag over the face, they can't do the breathing bag over the face either during the surgery. They have to intubate you to give the surgeons room to do everything they need to do here. So, um, that's why I had the sore throat. Based on how your anatomy is set up and how much they're retracting uh, either what direction, whichever area they end up doing the incision on, will determine how much pain you're going to have um, post-op with the sore throat. I'll be completely honest here. The sore throat was worse than the pain from the surgery. I have no incision pain. I didn't have any incision pain even after the surgery. Uh, the I'd say... The first six hours uh, post-surgery, pain across my shoulders was about a four, maybe a five. Uh, when the medicine would wear off, uh, they had me on um, oxycodone right out of surgery. Uh, the pain, uh, the sore throat was about a nine. And I've had my tonsils out, and that hurt. To me, it hurt pretty bad. And that was about 20 years ago. This is a lot worse. This was a lot worse than that, but it's manageable, uh, especially with pain med. It was very manageable. So in that regard, it wasn't uh, too big of a deal. But, th but I definitely noticed it. Um, I spent a couple of hours in post-op just getting my wits about me. Uh, family was there, of course, uh, to see me. And then they wheeled me up to a room. And this is where I, I feel it's very beneficial to have it in a hospital setting. Uh, once they got me to a room, you know, I had a nurse and a team checking on me about every hour and a half to two hours. Anytime I needed uh, pain medication, they, they were available if, you know, if it was safe to give it to me. Um, so... I've seen on, on YouTube where some people didn't have Tylenol as part of their prescribed medication right after surgery. Mine did. Uh, they were giving me 975 milligrams every eight hours uh, post-surgery there for the first 24 hours. And I was also getting oxycodone and a stool softener and Pepsid for my stomach. Um, that's a pretty standard protocol, I guess. Um, and that, that was uh, the oxycodone was every six hours if I needed it. I can tell you the first 24 hours, the oxycodone, I took it every six hours. And I am not a, I'm not a big proponent of narcotic medication as far as, I, I just, it's just a personal preference. Um, I don't want to have a lot of um, reactions to narcotics or, you know, even, even the chance that I would maybe get addicted to any of that. Um, so <clears throat> I, I'm not a big pill person, I guess you could say. So um, they had me up and walking around. Within the first 24 hours, they did not have a collar on me at all at any point. So that was not an issue at all. Um, I was able to eat a regular diet uh, right from the get-go. I, I did the first night choose uh, something to eat that was soft, though. I, I got like a, a ramen noodle bowl at the hospital along with chocolate pudding. Just items that are real soft because I was, I was not, I was too, I was afraid to eat anything like a bread or anything that first, that first night. But the next morning, regular breakfast, regular lunch, um, just dealing with a little bit of the sore throat was the biggest issue. So uh, I went home the next uh, afternoon, late in the afternoon, and I can tell you the ride home, that first ride home is, that sucks pretty good. Um, you don't really know how much, I mean, even with pain medication, things change. Um, once you are uh, in the car and everything like that, you'll feel the bumps. Any little bump in the highway, a pothole, anything, you're going to feel it. And by the time you get home, you're going to be sore and you're going to be ready to get out of the car. Um, thankfully, uh, my ride wasn't too long. It was about 30 minutes, but it was snowing. Uh, so that complicated things a little bit. But uh, my wife did a great job. She got us home safely and with as little bumps as possible. So there, there wasn't too much of an issue there. Uh, I am now 96 hours post-op. Here's what the incision looks like. 
Uh, they basically, it's about an inch and a half long, but it's right in my crease of my neck. So while it looks kind of ghastly right now, it's, it's not. Um, it's gonna, it should heal real well. That's just held together with Dermabond. Uh, there's no swelling going on. It is a little bit red right now just because of the stage I'm in and the healing process. And right below it, they did have a drain tube. That was taken out before I went home and it was held in by a single uh, stitch. But that stitch was held in real good. I mean, they had to tug on that thing to get it out. But anyway, I've got a little residual bruising around the site. But overall, it's not too bad at all. Um, it's very manageable pain level. Uh, this doesn't even hurt. It actually itches a little bit. Uh, so here on Saturday, uh, what changes have I had? So something I noticed, and I hope this helps everybody else, your pain level is going to get better each day. The first 24 hours is going to be the worst pain, obviously. It's it's first 24 hours after surgery. Your body's still adjusting to everything that's just happened to it. Uh, but the pain does get better. I promise you that. It will get better. Just uh, try to keep as optimistic uh, outlook as you can and know that it's going to get better. So if the pain worst on the first 24 hours was a 9, second day it was an 8, 8.5. Yesterday it was about a 5 or 6, and today it's about a 3. Um, I did take the oxycodone the first 48 hours I was home. I took it every 6 hours. Uh, yesterday, <coughs> actually I should say for the first 24 hours, yesterday I took one uh, every 12 hours. So I extended instead of 4 pills a day, I was taking 2. And then today it is currently, I think, about 12 o'clock local. Um, I have not had one since 6 p.m. last night, so I'm going on 18 hours without any oxycodone. No narcotics. The only thing I'm taking right now is the Tylenol, and I've switched from 975 every 8 hours to 500 milligrams every 4 hours. Uh, I am continuing to take that just for inflammation. The pain level right now, shoulders, 1, maybe a 2. Throat, we're down to about a two or a three. It's just more of an agitation thing at this point, but the pain has almost completely gone away. So I say all that to tell you there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it is not, it, it, it can be as bad as you want it to be, or it can be as good as you want it to be. And I was very thankful uh, to find a couple of folks here online uh, on YouTube with very optimistic, good outlook videos. I think that's very important. Uh, it's an important part of the process. I think it's important to um, read lots of literature on this surgery. Read lot, read everything. Read forum boards. Um, but be mindful to screen that stuff. Um, some people aren't going to have perfect outcomes. Some people are going to have a lot more pain. Some are going to do great. You'll fall within one of the two categories, of course, obviously. But um, I think your your mentality, your mental health is going to be just as important when you go through this. And for me going into this, you know, I wanted to get rid of the worry of, of having a damaged spinal cord or worse paralysis from a car accident or something like that. And they had actually said that that could happen. And so for me, I pretty much was like, well, hand me the scalpel, let's get this going. So my outlook was let's get it done so that we can, you know, move on with the rest of, of regular day to day routine and everything else. So I had a good outlook on it. I still do. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Uh, when the pain would set in, I would always try to remind myself, it's 24 hours, take it a day at a time. That is all you can do. Uh, it does get better. So uh, if you remember that, you'll be perfectly fine. Um, now, as far as uh, just a couple of other things. So as far as showering goes, so some people had mentioned, uh, oh, you need to cover this up. You need to make sure there's no water getting on it. I talked to my neurosurgeon and nurse before I left the hospital. No worry about that. They said, no, you can take a shower just like you regularly would. They said, just do not let the stream of water beat against it. Don't, don't lift your neck and let water just hit it. Um, for me, it was more just letting the water hit my head, run over my face and down my neck. Try to limit your shower to three to five minutes. I think that's probably the best. If you're in there 15 minutes and that water's constantly running off your face and on your neck, you don't want that, so you want it to stay pretty dry overall uh, with a little water running over it. Now, getting out of the shower, first thing you want to do is dry off your head and face and everything else, and then just hold a dry portion of the towel against your neck. Just hold it there. Don't move it up and down. Don't rub it side to side. Just hold it and lightly pat that, um, and then dry the rest of the way off or whatever. 
go back and pat that again just to make sure it's completely dry. You don't want any water or moisture to be hanging around in here at all. Um, but you don't have to avoid a shower. It actually was very relaxing to get in the shower and have the hot water against my back. Uh, the other thing, so um, sleeping. So when I got home, my wife had already uh, taken care of a heating pad for my neck. Uh, make sure you have one of those. That's good, especially the first 24 hours. I loved it. Our couch is deep set. So when you sit, you want to sit up as straight as possible with good posture. Ours, I tend to lean back a lot because it's such a deep set couch. I have one of those triangle things that you can lay on that's inclined that folds up into a, a square. I set that uh, on my couch and I leaned against that and it was perfect for me so that I'd, I'd be sitting straight up, looking straight ahead. You don't want to be slumped over or your head down, especially right now when everything's trying to heal and everything's inflamed. That will make you hurt worse, I promise. So uh, be mindful of your posture when you come home. The other thing is going to be with sleeping. So the first two nights I, I tried to sleep, I can tell you that that was pretty bad. Um, and it's not bad as in, oh my gosh, you're, you're, this is the most uncomfortable thing. It's just after you've been in the bed about two or three hours and you wake up, you are going to be stiff. And I mean stiff. You'll feel like a board. Uh, you got to get up. Move around a little bit, you know, just try to move your head, work everything as best you can. If you're due for your medication, take your medication, especially the pain med. I was due for it both times, both two nights that I woke up and took it and then went, you know, back to bed after just stretching just a little bit. Uh, but the first two nights, uh, sleeping was a challenge, especially once you woke up. Uh, the pain level was pretty high. It was mainly from, like I said, the stiffness of everything, but you're still dealing with the sore throat. Last night was the third night at home, slept in bed, and I slept almost perfectly fine. Um, I did wake up <coughs> once, but it wasn't bad at all. It could have been a whole lot worse than it was. Uh, I didn't have to take any pain meds. Actually, I, I took a Tylenol, but I did not take any of the oxycodone. Uh, I don't need it anymore. So uh, I did lay flat on my back. So if you're going to sleep in bed, if you need to sleep at an angle, by all means do so. I slept flat on my back. Um, they recommend back or side sleeping. And if you do that, make sure you have a pillow for between your legs or to put under your legs. It does help, believe it or not. It helps uh, reduce uh, some of the stress in your spine, especially your lower spine if you're on your side and everything. So um, just do whatever is most comfortable for you. But um, with that, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I don't know of anything else that I can particularly offer, at least that I can think of at the moment. So... Um, just remember to read up, know it's going to be okay, um, expect a good outcome. Uh, your expectation has a lot to do with how you eventually will end up. Uh, if you go into it ready for it and with a good mindset, you'll be fine. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will get to those as I can. I'd be more than happy to help folks out uh, with any questions you may have about any aspect of the surgery. Uh, don't hesitate to ask. And I will do another post-op uh, sur uh, surgery video uh, here in about 10 days. I expect all the glue to be gone at that point. They said it should start peeling any time now. Uh, so I'm expecting that to go away. Pain's pretty much gone. A uh, little bit of the throat pain left today, but I think that'll be gone by um, tomorrow, maybe on uh, Monday, which would be you know six days post-op, which is perfectly normal. So... Leave a message uh, and have a have a great Saturday, and I'll get to you guys when I can. Thanks.